Hey everybody, Dr. Keith here. I wanted to make a video and offer my thoughts and opinions regarding this coronavirus because it's been the hot topic in my practice over the past few weeks with my patients. So my intention for this video is to offer you some knowledge to hopefully gain a different perspective than what you're hearing in the media to help calm some of that fear and anxiety that seems to be running rampant right now in our community and society. So let's talk about the coronavirus. According to Dr. Nancy Messier of the CDC, she states that 80% of the people who become infected with the coronavirus will have zero or mild symptoms at best. The people that seem to be affected the most are adults, and even more seriously, are adults older than 60 years of age that have an underlying comorbidity, such as heart disease, or diabetes, or high blood pressure, or an autoimmune issue, or some sort of compromised immune system. But I want you guys to understand that even if you do get infected with the coronavirus, it is not a death sentence. There's three examples I want to point out to you that I found this week. On Wednesday the 18th in Newsweek, they stated that a 103-year-old woman in Iran had made a full recovery from the coronavirus. They also stated that a 91-year-old man had also survived after being ill for three days and having pre-existing health conditions of asthma and high blood pressure, which increased the risk of complications from the coronavirus. I found another report published uh, from a Chinese news agency on March 7th that stated that a 100-year-old man had a full recovery and been discharged from the hospital in Wuhan after being treated for 13 days. So even though you get infected and you do have symptoms, there is hope of making a full recovery. So to kind of understand and put things in perspective, I wanted to go over some other recent outbreaks just to kind of compare numbers to kind of put your mind at ease a little bit. Now, there was a SARS outbreak back in 2002. Now, remember the SARS, which is also a strain of a coronavirus and is in the corona family. They're kind of the same, same family, but different strains. So the SARS had a worldwide infection of 8,437 people. It caused 813 deaths, and the RO value for the SARS was anywhere between 2.1 to 3.8, depending on the region in which the number was calculated. Now, what is an RO value? The RO value means that if I were infected with the virus, that I could infect anywhere between 2.1 to 3.8 people. So it's kind of a value of how virulent and contagious the virus is. In 2009, the H1N1 outbreak, or the swine flu outbreak, it infected 60.8 million people worldwide. It caused 12,500 deaths, and the RO value was 1.4 to 1.6. This year, this flu season, 2019-2020, according to the CDC, has infected 38 to 54 million people. It has caused 23 to 59,000 deaths this season and has an RO value of 1.3 to 1. Or, I'm sorry, uh, RO value of 1.3. The coronavirus, according to the John Hopkins Interactive Map, has infected worldwide 287,000 people and has close, killed to close to 12,000 deaths. But its RO value is only between 2 to 3. According to the CDC in the US, we have 15,000 infections and have 201 deaths. So just looking at the numbers, you can see that here in the US, we are kind of just at the beginning of this. Are we at the peak yet? Are we past the peak? Who really knows? That's what these upcoming weeks are going to display and see how these things unfold. So the coronavirus is a little bit more virulent. It has a little bit more of a fatality rate, but do we need to fear it? No. Do we need to be respectful of it? Yes. We do need to take the right precautions and be proactive with this so that it doesn't grow into a bigger number. Now, the reason why there's all the hysteria and anxiety and panic about this is because this is a new strain that is new to the environment. 
With the flu, we kind of have a history with the flu. We know what the numbers are going to be every single year, so we know how bad it can be or what to do with about it. This coronavirus, we don't know how bad the numbers are going to be, so we do need to be careful and take the right precautions with this. So what I want you guys to understand is that flattening the curve, staying at home, respecting this virus and what is happening is really important. Because I saw this one medical doctor and he was stating that in the United States, we have about 100,000 ICU beds available to treat patients. On any given day, 65,000 of them are already spoken for with trauma patients, heart attack patients, stroke and cancer patients. So that gives about 35,000 beds that are available to treat people with this infection. So we don't want to inundate and flood our system and overwhelm our capacity and capability to treat people that need the care with this. So we do need to be respectful of this virus and what is going on. But I want you guys to understand as well that it's not about getting rid of the virus or killing it. There are literally hundreds of trillions of viruses in our environment. We have more bacteria in our gut and on our skin than we do cells in the human body. So it's not about completely getting rid of all these viruses and bacteria. Your best defense is a strong offense and keeping your body strong and your immune system strong so that it can keep these things in check. That is what is really important here. Because what are viruses? They are opportunistic in nature. They go after somebody who has a weak constitution or a compromised immune system. So if your immune system is strong, then it doesn't matter what you're exposed to. Your body will be able to handle it. That's what the immune system is designed to do. The last thing I want to address is the fear. When we put all of our energy and focus and in buying into this fear that sits outside ourselves, we're literally giving our power away because we're pointing our fingers at the virus. And when we point our fingers at the virus, then we simply become the victim. We lose faith and trust in how powerful the human body really is. Instead of giving into and buying into that fear, why not take our power back? Realize how strong our bodies really are, how believe in innate intelligence, because our immune system was designed to handle whatever comes its way. We just need to focus inward and strengthen our immune system so it doesn't matter if you become exposed or infected. Your immune system will be able to handle it very easily. That's what it was designed to do. So let's take our power back and focus on really what we need to do at this moment of time. So I hope this is helpful in helping you guys to understand a little bit more, comparing certain numbers and realizing that there is a lot that we can do. So in my next video, I'm actually going to focus more on the immune system and what we can do to strengthen our immunity. So thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Keith.